guys, it's Brant, and I'm back with another Indie Label album review. Now, if you haven't seen my first one I did in this series, I'm going to have four videos in this series. The first one I did was for Sebadoa, which is the album that's right there. I reviewed that. I'll put that card up here for you to uh, check out if you're interested in seeing that and seeing what I thought about Sebadoa's album. Uh, but today I'm going to be reviewing the next album that Danger Bird sent me. And I just took it out of the box at random. And uh, did a little background work on the band because I like to know about them. And uh, then listened to the songs. And I've made my review of the album. And so we're going to get into it. Let you see a little bit about the album. Hear a little about the band and the history and the recording of the album. And then get into the songs. So... The band is called Criminal Hygiene, and the album is called Run It Again, which this is what the album looks like. I'll bring that here. Uh, the album is called Run It Again. I'm going to get my finger off of it. There we go. So Run It Again is the album. Criminal Hygiene is the band. And uh, this came out, let me check my notes here. So this came out, let's go ahead and get into some notes really quick. Uh, Criminal Hygiene, Run It Again for the third time, uh, released on March the 1st, 2019 on Danger Bird Records. It was produced and mixed by Alice Newport. The band was formed in 2011, the based in Los Angeles, California. Uh, members are Michael Magic Fiore, or Fior, plays, uh, sings, plays guitars and keys, Michael Chili Hiller, there's two Michaels, so I suppose that's why they have nicknames, uh, vocals and guitars, and Sean Birdman Erickson plays the drums percussion. Uh, before they had this, before they put this album out, they had released, uh, they had independently produced singles, an EP, and had independently toured. And Run It Again is their first major label release. And so with that, we'll get into the album, get into the packaging. This is something really cool that they sent along with the package. Uh, it's a postcard. And if you see that there, it says Greetings from a Postcard is the name of the song. But if you look, if I catch it right, you see that this is actually a record. And I played it on the record player. It's actually, you know, you can hear it. It's very scratchy, very staticky because it's paper. But it's an actual postcard. I don't know how this would sound if you sent, actually sent it through the mail to somebody. But I just thought this was really cool that they sent that to me. And uh, I'm going to stick that inside the album so I'll have it. Um, but yeah. Greetings from a postcard. That was cool. Um, now this is the record. Like I said, turn it around right. So there's the front cover. There's the three three members of the band over here. And here's the back. It's got the track listing. And uh, apparently they're big fans of the color green because there's green here. This sign is kind of a green neon sign. And there's a lot of green on the back. Plus they've got some rolling rocks here. And I'll show you something else when we get into the album that shows me they're probably a big fan of green. Or at least green is their theme for this album. But it's got the track listing on the back. And then you open it up and it has an insert, which I, I think it's really cool to see inserts coming back. It has the insert on the inside. Uh, it has the lyrics uh, on one side. And then it has a recording uh, pictures and just pictures of the band on the back side which I think is really cool. And just like the album before I got, there's a card and there's a code on the back that you can download this. It says, thank you for buying, for thank you for actually buying our product. That's always cool to do because you're not always at home with your albums. And so it's cool to have a way to listen. You can also listen to them on Spotify, Amazon, I'm sure Apple Music. You can also find them there too. I looked and you can find them there. They also have a Facebook page. Most of these bands have social media these days, Instagram. So if you like um, some of the clips you hear and you like my review uh, or whatever, you can check them out for yourself. Whether I like them or not, you can check them out for yourself. I told Danger Bird they were going to get a fair uh, review and not necessarily a positive one, but they would get a fair one. So we'll see if it's positive at the end. But this is really cool. I tell you what, this right here, just right off the bat, I love that rolling rock green uh, vinyl. Nice and thick vinyl. 
uh, and it's got the logo, the Run It Again logo on there. That is really, really cool. So now we're going to get right to it. We're going to get into the songs. Uh, so track one, there's 10 songs on this album. And so track one is a song called Hardly News. Hardly News is like an upbeat song. It's a good song to start the album with. There's a sign in it. Uh, it's like... Uh, it's there. There's a lyric in it where he's like, "I misread the teleprompter, but that's hardly news." It almost it's like a it's like a, a song about almost like being in a band but making mistakes, and at least that's what I got out of it. And I played that clip I played was from the video. So if you see videos, then apparently they have a video, uh, and their videos are actually kind of funny. Uh, I watched through some of the videos. There's a video coming later that I really like. But Harley News, it's a good song to start this album off with. I like it. I give it a thumbs up. I like it. So the second song is uh, Breaking Out the Stained Glass. To you and only you feel like And then you come around Breaking Out the Stained Glass Breaking Out the Stained Glass is a good second song for this album uh it's got insightful lyrics it's almost like uh having your own mind and thinking your own way about religion and about the way you're supposed to do things and i like that i'm a free thinker when it comes to religion and believing what i want to believe and not really forcing what i believe on other people uh you know what what's that if that's what it's really about you know i don't know but that's just kind of what i got out of it it's a nice change uh, it's, it's, it's different from the first song, but kind of in the same line of the first song, but different enough. It has a nice change at the end. They have some really cool dynamics. They do some really cool dynamic things, changing up their songs, not only on this song, but on songs to come. So, uh, but I like this song. It's a good song. So I like it. I give this one a thumbs up. So we're going to the third track, Thankless. I try to see the good in everyone, the bad in myself. A Thankless is a good song. It's got some really cool chords in it. It's got really good arrangement. And, uh, uh, you know, but it's kind of a downer to be the third song on the album. It's a Debbie Downer. It's like we had these two upbeat songs. And the third song, it's like, the brakes go on. You know, uh, I like this song by itself. I like it, uh, but as but the, being the third song after those two songs, it kind of kills the mood for me. This would have been a good fourth song. If we could have swapped the fourth track and the third track and put this as the fourth track, if I was tracking this, that's a lot of tracks. That's what I would have done. Uh, but it's a good song on its own, but in the placement, I'm just not a big fan of it in the placement, but I like the song by itself. So I give the song a thumbs up, but... It really bothers me how it's tracked on the album. But anyway, the next song is called Dangers of Convenience. There's something to be said for the dangers of convenience. We found, we found. Dangers of Convenience is a great song, and it's probably my favorite song up to this point. This should have been the third track on the album, right behind Breaking Out the Stained Glass. Uh... It's got a great. It's a great song. It's got good message talking about the dangers of convenience, and it's got a funny as hell video. It it looks very homemade, uh, you know. But it's the kind of stuff that I would love to make a video like that. Uh, the the guys are dressed up. the The drummer is a, a Uber driver, except they call him a goober driver, and uh, the uh, the lead singer he's supposedly in a band. And he's like a lead singer of a band. And the other guitarist is a, a cop, plays a cop in it. You should check the video out. Um, I put a card up here for that video. You need to go check it out at some point in time after you watch this. Go back and check it out. It's a great video. Uh, but I love this song. Uh, it's got really good dynamics. It slows, gets quiet in some parts, and then they kick back in. 
And uh, I love this song. Uh, I get a love out of this one. You know, this one has two thumbs up. I love this song. So the final track on the first side is a song called Rearrange Me. Now, Rearrange Me is another great song. Uh, it's a great way to end the first side of the album. Um, it... And Mike sounds great. I don't know if he's Magic Mike or if he's Chili Mike. If somebody knows, please tell me down in the comments because I'm dying to know who is who. Who's Magic Mike and who's Chili Mike? Uh, but this is a great song. I pick up in, in these songs throughout this album, not just on this song but other songs, I pick up a hint of Tom Petty, uh, some Bruce Springsteen. Um, their music has a great style. I pick up Foo Fighters in some things, especially in this song. It has a lot of that... Just that Foo Fighter sound. I think it might be that opening riff that does. It almost sounds like, for a very second, split second, it sounds like Everlong starting up. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying they're ripping people off. It's just a lot of times in a band, we're a product of our influences. And I'm not sure if they, these are influences for these guys, but it's just what I pick up. It's just what I hear because it just could be bands that I'm familiar with and I'm picking it up in these songs. Um... I also hear some soul asylum sometimes in uh in in some in some songs uh but not over the top on any of it. They're not ripping anybody off. But this is the perfect song to finish the first side. I love it. This is two thumbs up. So let's flip that beautiful green vinyl. Greetings from a postcard. Greetings from a postcard. Summer ash trees and Now, Greetings from a Postcard is the one that I was showing. It's the one that was on the postcard. And wow, this is a great song. It hooked me the very first time I heard it. From the opening riff and before he even starts singing, as soon as he started singing, Greetings from a Postcard, I was like, this is a great song. Uh, I loved it the first time I heard it. Great vocals, great performance. Very well recorded and produced and mixed. This album, the instruments sound good, the drums sound good, the guitars sound good. Sometimes the vocals, if I slight the mix, any at all, sometimes the vocals are just a little too far back. I would like them pushed a little forward in the mix. Um, sometimes I lose his, what he's actually saying. I lose it a little bit, but like I said, that's just made me a personal preference to me. I'm old, I'm halfway deaf from... You know, I was an 80s child, so, you know, I listened to metal, so these ears are 50 years old, and they're not what they used to be, but I would have liked to seen that vocal pushed up a little more in the mix, but Greetings from a Postcard is my favorite song up to this point on the album. Two thumbs up. I love it. So the second track on the second side is Private Screening Heroin. For me, the second side is really starting to heat up. Uh, this is supposed to be a B-side. and You know, B-sides are typically the B-sides. But this is a great song. These songs just keep, keep rocking. I love the way it just starts off that. It starts off with that drums. And it's, they've got a lot of syncopated things that they do. Uh, it's just really good. I love it. It's a great song. They keep rocking. The great vocals and the melodies on this song is really good. Um, I just, I love this song. This song has two thumbs up too. So the third track on this side is a song called Young and Obscene. And the great songs on this second side, they just keep coming. I love this song. The song has swagger to it, and it has a swing to it, and like a rockabilly. It's like da 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 da. -na. It has that a great great. I almost wish this would have been tracked not so late on the album. Maybe if it had been on side one. Maybe if we would have took 
breaking out the stained glass and put it on the second side and move this song up a little bit. You know, it's just a really good song to wait to like the third from the second from the last track on the album. Um, but I love this song. Two thumbs up. I love it. Will the trend keep going? Let's see. The fourth track is called All But Your Swan Song. This was all but your swan song Whether righteous or wrong A champion here in my sheet Now, it seems that every album always has this one song that I don't like as much as the rest of the songs. And uh, probably this one might be it for me personally. Uh, it's not a bad song. Uh, it's a good song that's got great parts to it. Uh, I won't skip it, but it's just there's something about it. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't set right with me. And if you love it and you listen to it and you love it, that's great. I hope you do. I hope you like the whole album. I hope, you know, I'm always trying to show people good new music and everything. So I hope you like it. Um, but it's just kind of a low point for me. But it's not bad. I still like it. It gets a sideways thumb, maybe. Not a down, but a sideways thumb. So, so having said that, let's go on to the last song on the album, Turpentine. It cuts me right down the line. So drink And here we go. What a way to end an album. Uh, it's like two songs in one because it starts off, uh, you know, kind of slow and then it kicks in to this like punk thing almost. And this is actually sung by the other Michael in the band. The other Michael. I don't know if he's Chili Mike or Magic Mike, but it's the other Michael. And uh, it's cool because as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, okay. And he, he has a different voice. It's a, it's a higher pitched voice. Uh, and he does really good on backing. So it's really good to hear him singing a song. This is one of their older songs. This is one that I saw a video for and it was several years old, maybe like five years old, maybe older than that. There's a few songs they've had on here um, from, from a, this from a while back. Uh, but I love how this song starts off slow paced and then it kicks into that punk. And it's almost like a jam at the end of it. And then it just, you think it's going to end. And then they kind of kick back in again. And then they stop. Uh, there's a bass line they do in this song when it's kind of slow. And then the chords that they're playing when it's going really fast. I love it too. I love, love, love this song. So, well, I love this song. I'm not going to love, love, love it. Because my favorite song on the album is probably uh, Greetings from a Postcard. But God, these other songs on this B side are really good. And there's a couple really good ones on the A side too. So I give this one two thumbs up. Okay, so my final thoughts. This is a great album uh, by this band. They've been honing their craft for years now, working on some of these songs since the beginning, 2011. And honestly, to me, it shows on this album. Uh, I definitely am going to be going back to this album. Uh, and for more plays in the future probably tomorrow morning on my way to work. Uh, and I'll probably listen to it again sometime tonight before I go to bed after I'm making this video. Because I really want to marinate this album because, you know, I've got some songs that's really grabbed me uh, and I really want to hear more of them. So uh, I give this album four out of five stars. And that's not just because Danger Bird is sending them to me for me to review. I honestly really do enjoy this album. So... It's a great effort, well-written, well-performed, and well-produced. A couple little blemishes in some of the mixing. A couple little songs that aren't, to me, quite the quality of some of the other songs. But still, this is a great album. It's a pretty green album. And I'll show you the cover again if you missed it, if you just happened to miss it earlier. There's the cover. Run it again. Check them out, guys. Uh, Criminal Hygiene, run it again. Good album. That's all I've got for today. I'll be back in the future with another album. i got two more left in the box. So I'll be back in the future probably in a couple weeks. And we'll uh, see what I think about those. So I'm Brant. 
Then my head channel. If you liked what you saw, click subscribe, click the bell notification button. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> Hell, I want to get to 100,000. But uh, if you like what you see, hit subscribe, click the bell notification. Uh, leave a comment down the bottom. Uh, if you know who the guys are or if you like this album, which your favorite songs on it. Uh, have you ever heard of this band before? You know, they've been around a while, but this is their first release. So if you've heard of Criminal Hygiene before, and uh, check out those videos, the video I gave the cards for and everything. Uh, check those videos out because they're pretty funny. And uh, that's all for me. That's all I've got today. I'm Brant within my head channel. This has been another indie album review. Appreciate you watching. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later.